Good day to you students. Welcome to another lesson summary review. Today we're on lesson seven of the course relating to Christ, John's Gospel. And we're going to go ahead and cover the lesson plan as well as the lesson goals for this week's review. So if you have your study guide, you can take a look at the front section of lesson number seven in your study guide. And we'll see the lesson plan listed there. So the first part of our lesson plan we're going to discuss in this review is the prelude to Jesus' triumphant entry. Second, we're going to look at the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Third, we'll see that some Greeks seek Jesus. Fourth, Jesus speaks of his death. Fifth, the unbelief of the Jews. And six, Jesus washes his disciples' feet and predicts his betrayal. So our lesson goal based on those six points of our lesson plan is number one. We will state events leading up to Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Second, we will discuss the importance of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. Third, we will explain how Jesus' response to the request of the Greeks is a call to discipleship. Fourth, we will explain how Jesus' hour, the hour of the cross, changed things. Fifth, we will state the leader's disbelief and its consequences. And sixth, we will explain how Jesus' washing of the disciples' feet show the extent of his love. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our first part of our lesson plan, which is prelude to Jesus' triumphant entry. The corresponding goal for this part is to state the events leading up to Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. So we'll see in John chapter 12, verses 1 through 8, that's what our reference is for this part of the lesson, where we're going to talk about Jesus anointing at Bethany. So we see in this portion of scripture that at Bethany, a feast was prepared to celebrate the victory over death. Mary applied costly perfume on the feet of Jesus to show her love for him. Judas, however, complained that the perfume should have been sold and the money used to feed the poor. But the truth is that he was a thief and wanted the money for himself. So we see all of this depicted in this portion of scripture that we read in John chapter 12, verse 1 through 8. Now we also see in this chapter the plot against Lazarus. The lesson guide want us to look at John chapter 12, verses 9 through 11 this time. And as we read that portion of scripture, we see that many people came to see Lazarus when they heard that he had been raised from the dead. Through this miracle, many believed in Jesus. But Satan, God's enemy, stirred the religious leaders to fight against Jesus. And they wanted to destroy Lazarus. Because he was living proof that Jesus really was the resurrection and the life. And because Lazarus was a living witness to God's power put on display through Jesus, it was a threat to the religious leader's power and position. The second part of our lesson plan talks about the triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And the corresponding goal for this part of the lesson is to discuss the importance of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. Our lesson guide pointed us to, again, John chapter 12, verses 12 through 19. And as we read that portion of scripture, we see that it was the time of the Passover, which was a yearly feast to remind the people of of how God had saved them from slavery and death. And at this time, many people went to Jerusalem, which was the center of worship for God's people at this time. 
And Jesus also went to Jerusalem for the Passover. We see in the scriptures that the people weighed palm branches before him as he rode into town on a donkey. And they did this to honor him as their Messiah and King. We see that some of them called him King of Israel. Afterward, when Jesus was arrested, his enemies used this against him. They accused him of trying to be a king. So what does that mean for us today, students? Today, we must revere Jesus as our king, not an earthly or political king, but the eternal king. And a king is a ruler, and Jesus must rule our lives. We must honor him as Lord through our obedience of his word. It is by our behavior that people will know the truth of our commitment to him. Jesus must be king of our lives at all times. And therefore, we should live in submission to his authority and lordship over our lives. The third part of our lesson plan is some Greeks seek Jesus. So we see the corresponding goal for this section is to explain how Jesus' response to the request of the Greeks is a call to discipleship. Again, you see it, your lesson guide pointed you to, to John chapter 12. This time we're looking at verses 20 through 26. So we see in this section that some Greeks also went to see Jesus. Jesus knew that in a few days he would be crucified like a criminal. But because of his death, not only Greeks, but also people from every nation would be saved. They would have him as their king forever. We see that by faith in his name, his words, and his sacrifice, the understanding and experience of eternal salvation would come to people of every nation. You see listed in John chapter 12, verse 24, where it reads, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. So students, we see that Jesus said that we must follow him. To do that will be the beginning of the greatest life and experience ever. Let's look at our fourth part of our lesson plan for this week's review, which is Jesus speaks of his death. The corresponding goal for this section is to explain how Jesus hour, which is the hour of the cross changed things. Again, our lesson pointed us to John chapter 12, verses 27 through 36. And I'm asking you this question, students. How would you feel if you knew that within a few hours, you would be put to death for crimes you had not done? And how would you pray? Well, in this portion of scripture, we see that Jesus wanted to pray for God to save him from such suffering, but he knew that he had come from heaven and had become a man for this very purpose of dying. So we see he talked with the father and he prayed to his father. So he knew that he would die for the sins of the whole world, for your sins and mine. So Jesus prayed, Father, Glorify your name. So what help it was to Jesus when God answered him from heaven in a voice that all could hear. We see God was with him. God would help him endure the terrible hours ahead. And through his death, God's name would be glorified for all time and eternity. 
we see in this portion of scripture that at Jesus' death, sin and Satan were judged and defeated. Jesus took our sins and the judgment for our sins upon himself. However, the choice to believe in him is up to each of us. To do otherwise, it would mean that we do not accept the sacrifice that Jesus made on our behalf. So suppose you owed a great debt, but somebody paid it for you. How foolish it would be for you to try to pay it again. Jesus paid a great debt for you when he died for your sins. And to receive the benefit of his payment, you must believe in him as Savior and Lord. Let's take a look at our next session of our lesson plan, which is the unbelief of the Jews. The corresponding goal for this section is to state the leader's disbelief and its consequences. Take a look at John chapter 12, verses 37 through verse 50. And as you read that section, you will notice that many other people did not believe that Jesus was the Messiah because he did not fit their ideas of what the Messiah would do. But even their unbelief was prophesied by the prophet Isaiah. Make note of Isaiah chapter 53 verse number 1. We see in this scripture that though some of the leaders saw that Jesus was the Messiah, they were afraid to accept him because of what the others would do to them. And students today, many people are afraid to accept Christ for the same reason. And some are secret believers. The very words they refuse to listen to would be the words by which they would be judged at the last judgment. We need to understand that whoever believes and obeys Jesus' words will be rewarded with eternal life with him. Look at our next section of our lesson plan, which is Jesus washes his disciples' feet and predicts his betrayal. The sixth goal that corresponds to this lesson is to explain how Jesus' washing of the disciples' feet showed the full extent of his love. The lesson pointed us to John chapter 13 this time, verses 1 through 20. And as we read in that portion of scripture, we see that at the Passover, lambs were sacrificed for the sins of the people. So on the day of the Passover, Jesus, the Lamb of God, was going to die for the sins of the world. But first, he must teach his disciples. You see, the disciples had been arguing over who would be greatest in Jesus' kingdom. So Jesus taught them that true greatness is service to others. You see, in those times, it was the custom for a servant to wash the feet of the guests. Or one friend might honor another by washing his feet. But not one of the disciples was willing to do the work of a servant and wash the feet of the others. So Jesus washed their feet. And how ashamed they were to see Jesus the Son of God, was doing a work they never thought possible. Their master was taking the place of a slave. And if we are going to follow Jesus, we must be willing to do whatever needs to be done to help others. This is our way of washing others' feet. We also see another valuable lesson that Jesus taught us here. Jesus taught us that we must let him cleanse our, us daily from our faults. 
The disciples had bathed just before going to the place where they ate. But they had gotten their feet dirty walking along the dusty streets. Students, we need to understand that Jesus, our Savior, washes away our sins. All of our sins. But daily, we must walk through life and we get dirty. We do things that we should not do. We do not need to get saved all over again, but must take our faults and failures to Jesus and let him wash them away. We also see in chapter 13 of the book of John, the account of Jesus predicting his betrayal. The lesson point us to John chapter 13, verses 21 through 30. And in that text, we see that Jesus knew how he would be betrayed. He knew that Jesus, one of his own disciples, would turn against him. One trouble Judas had, we notice in the scripture, was his love of money. See, he was treasurer and stole from the general funds. Now, this may seem like a little thing, but one sin leads to another. Judas turned Jesus over to his enemies in exchange for 30 pieces of silver. He sold his own soul, his place in Christ's kingdom. So, students, let us understand that money in itself is not wrong. But to love money is what leads to so many difficulties. In fact, the apostle Paul warns in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 10, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. We also see in this 13th chapter of John that Jesus gave his disciples a new commandment. The lesson point us to John chapter 13, verses 31 through 35, where we see Jesus again told his disciples of his death, that he would go where they could not go at the time. And they had to stay on earth and live in such a way that all people would know that they had something different about them. They were to love one another even as he loved them. And this is still a very important command that we must follow daily. We also see in the 13th chapter of John, Peter's denial. The lesson point us to chapter 13 again, verses 36 to 38. Now, as we've looked through this chapter, we've already learned that Jesus was the prophet and Messiah whom God had promised. God shows prophets things that are going to happen. Then the prophets predict these events or tell about them before they happen. And you have read several of Jesus' predictions. He said that he would be crucified, that Judas would betray him. And Peter would deny that he knew him. So Peter thought he was stronger spiritually than the other disciples. But Jesus knew Peter well and told him what would happen before it did. Students, what happened to Peter in this chapter helps us understand our own human nature. We must realize that our spiritual strength is not in ourselves. It is in the Lord. And so prayerfully, as we meditate on what, what we learned in this chapter, this lesson, lesson number seven of the course relating to Christ, when we've looked at chapters 12 and 13, we should remember the events leading up to Jesus' triumphant entry. We need to Understand the importance of Jesus' entry into Jerusalem for the Passover as the Lamb of God. 
we should be able to understand Jesus' request of the Greeks and our call to discipleship as well. And how Jesus, our on the cross, purchased salvation for every man, woman, boy, and girl. We see in this lesson that many of the leaders had disbelief and we see the consequences of that belief that they would not inherit the kingdom of God. And we also learned a very valuable lesson about washing of the disciples' feet and how we can also serve others as a way of washing each other's feet. Taking the role of the servant for the servant will be the servant of all who will be considered great in the kingdom of God. So prayerfully, this lesson will encourage us, remind us, and renew our commitment to discipleship, renew our submission to Jesus' lordship over our lives, and that we will surrender every area of our life to his ru ruling, his guiding, and his leading, looking to Jesus as the example of who we should be. So students, thank you so much for allowing me this time to share this lesson review with you. I certainly hope it blesses you and I look forward to our next session. In the meantime, may God watch over you, keep you, and sustain you. And always, good day.